Hello, hello, hello. It's Scrapping Like a Lady. How you guys doing today? I am doing all right. It is 5.35 on a Wednesday. And I am on my way to the grocery store. And then I am on my way home. And today, I just wanted to be an encouragement to someone else. Um, I know that it's easy for us to let life just wear us down and you guys know all the crap I've been through that's what I'm calling it some crap um but sorry y'all I gotta grab a tissue and block my face I look into this camera I'm like oh my god I look like the someone threw oil on my face okay Anyways, getting back to topic. Oh, Jesus. Why? Um, I am so uh, super spontaneous, aren't I? Squirrel! But all that to say is we all go through a lot of stuff, you know? And the way we handle things is, in my opinion, a top behavior. Um... Yeah, it could be your temperament as well because you have some kids that are just little Tasmanian devils and you need to throw them in a creek somewhere. And I understand that. But um, for the most part, it is a taught behavior. You know, the way we act, the way we accept things, the way we deny things, all of these things are taught. So I had a lady come in today and this is why this sparked this topic with me today. And you know, I'm the type of person, I'll let you act out. I, I will. I will let you show yourself, honey. Ain't none of my business, you know, unless it interferes with my um, aura, my flow, my, my family, you know, unless it interferes, let those act out, honey. As, as long as it ain't directed to you. So she came in and she was just frazzled. And she was with her boyfriend and I was like, uh, what happened? She was like, I'm, I'm just really pissed off. I'm really in a bad mood and that. And you know what I'm thinking in my mind, you choose to be, you, you choose to be, you know? So, okay. And I said, well, what happened? Trying to make light conversation, you know? Cause you acting cray cray like that. I really don't care. You know, I'm not a person that soothes other people very well. You know, like Kim said this weekend, yeah, if you want comfort and love and all of those kind of things, you better go to dad. So, yeah, I'm not the one, you know, get yourself together. So, she said that the people at her work expected her to do this, that, and the other, and she's been there for 21 years, and I guess she thought she had seniority and she shouldn't have to do the grunt work and this, that, and the other. And, you know, well, what I was thinking and I held my back, myself back from saying is, well, did they pay you? If they paid you and you knew you're only going to be there for eight hours and now those hours are up, let it go, you know, um, but apparently she feels like the load is unfair and da 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 da. My thinking on that is they can only use you as much as you are there. And you're only there for a slotted amount of time. So work, work like a dog. Get off and let it go. You know, and I know a lot of people don't subscribe to what I'm saying, but if it resonates with you. This is why I don't have high blood pressure. Now, some people, it's hereditary. And other people, they run their own pressure up. So, I'm looking at this lady act. I mean, she was just, she pan poured her some wine. She was like, oh, oh. I'm like, didn't you come down in the car on your way here? Are you doing it for your boyfriend can watch you? I mean, what is going on, Jesus? So, I said, Pam, give me the blood pressure cup. Let me see what this lady, honey, 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 honey. This lady blood pressure, I ain't gonna tell what it is, but it was, it was high. So I said to her, you need to calm down. 
you really need to calm down. Let me see, you gonna wear your body down for what? For a temporary problem? One that in my opinion, you're thinking bad about, they can only use you up for the time you're there. And work like a dog, so what? I do more work than the other people, so what? I do more work in my house than my husband. He goes to work and that's the end of life. He mows the lawn in the summertime every other week. And so life isn't balanced. Stop looking for it to be balanced. Find your happiness, lady. I just don't get it. Maybe it's me, but I just don't get it. I'm gonna wear myself out have all kind of vascular diseases <laughs> um, because they wanted me to work hard while I was at work. Change the way you think about it. You know? If they have a whoop in their hand and they start beating on you, oh Jesus, you best get up out of there. If they start messing with your money, you show up for work and you work that whole two weeks and at the end of it, they say, we're going to have to pay you in two more weeks because we ain't got the money for you. I got a problem for you. <laughs> I got a problem for you. You're going to give me my money, you know, but that ain't the case. Did they pay you? You know, I always joke around with Cameron and, and I say that to him. I'm like, uh, he's like, man they made me stay an hour longer and work or you know I had to do this while I was at work he always says the same thing he thinks he pulls more you know do more work than the other people he always I said well did they pay you while you was there mom did they pay you then shut up you're good you know they stop paying you you stop showing up then you ain't got a problem with work no more at least not that work you know but I mean, I listen to people all the time talk about things in life being fair and unfair. If you looking for life to be fair, sorry, the red lights is falling on nighttime right now. The person's brake lights are shining in my face. But if you're looking for life to be fair, you're a fool. I'm just going to tell you right here, right now, you're a fool. If you use that word even, that's not fair. Girl, bye. Marriage ain't fair. Cheering ain't fair. Work ain't fair. Friendships ain't fair. You can go on and on and on. I was watching these people from London and they was fighting and, and feuding. It was about neighbors who, the whole show was about neighbors who fight and fuel. And some of the stuff was so dang on tea and it just got it just morphed it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and so I was like you're mad because their kid threw the ball and it hit your mailbox did it damage your mailbox did it break the mailbox the mailbox wasn't nowhere near the house so it's not like you know, it was a ways from the house. So it's not like he was going to throw it and they were worried about him breaking the windows or something like that. You know, it, it wasn't that problem because the police officer said to the lady, well, what damage did it do? And she was like, I just don't want him doing that. But ma'am, it was an accident. So it's not like he's doing it every day intentionally. You know, I, I just... I just listen to people and, you know, my husband used to get mad when my uh, neighbors across the street would play on our lawn. Why? First of all, if the house is over here and the lawn goes this way and they're throwing the ball, they're not throwing it towards the house. No, they're both horizontal. So you're not really worried about him them breaking the windows or hitting our cars. That That's not the problem, okay? Uh, because if they do hit my car or it goes near the car, which, you know, that could be a possibility. We can move our cars to the street and now they've got that whole run. That's what I'm thinking. 
and Willie's like, no, I don't want them playing on my lawn because I don't want the liability of someone else's child possibly falling on my property. Okay, what's the probability of that happening? Yeah, it's possible, but not probable. So he would conjure up all of these things or reasons why the children couldn't play on the lawn. It's the biggest lawn on in the whole development, actually. Our front lawn is. It's a whole big old space because we have a yard and a half. We're the only ones that have that they didn't put another house there. So I just don't get it. You're just being that ugly old man on the street okay move out the way oh, Jesus they're doing all this work on the road they got the whole thing backed up Jesus I should have went the other way I did not know. Remember, they were doing this side of the road. Now they're doing the other side of the road. So, and it took them about six months to do our road. So I guess it was, this is going to be this way. I'm going to make sure I take the, the tollway in from now on, Jesus. Um, it's all in the way that you look, you know, at it. And Willie and my neighbor, they used to go at it. They used to go at it. And I mean, it was bad. They've called the cops. No, sorry. Willie has called the cops on them twice. Um, over their kids, playing on the lawn, you know, all kind of stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> boy, bye. Um, he called it on our other neighbors because their dog wouldn't start barking. And, you know, they came over. Did you call the police on us? I don't know how they knew that the that Willie had called the police and they were like, did you call the police on us? And Willie's like, yeah, shut your blankety blank dog up. And I was like, oh, why do I have to have the crazy husband? Of course, you guys, this was 22 years ago. He old now. He don't be giving folks no hard time, you know. Uh, now all the neighbors, hi, Willie, hi. I'm like, everybody is all friendly. We all old together. <laughs> Because we have only one neighbor, actually, actually two neighbors, but we wasn't friends with the neighbors down this way. And these people over here were some weirdos about the dog issue. Those are the only two people that moved out. We are all still together. One of our neighbors was thinking about moving and he was like, honey, I thought about leaving you guys. I felt like I was leaving family. I was like, uh-uh, I ain't putting my house on the market. <laughs> we are, we're all family. I went to take my prescription and... um um, to Kroger, a new pharmacy. And I forgot that Tanya, my neighbor across the street that Willie kept calling the cops on, she actually works there. And so she was like, Hey girl. And she, I looked up, I was like, Hey, I forgot you work here. It's a wonderful community. We have wonderful people. I was like, can you just bring my prescription home with you? She was like, sure. I'll do that. Anyways, but I actually have to go pick up my prescriptions because they only had Dr. Wynn put me on a new prescription. So the only pharmacy in my town that had it was Kroger, but I didn't know that. So you go to Walmart, they're like, we don't have this. I, you go to um, CVS, they were like, no, we don't have this. Walgreens, no, we don't have this. They had it at Kroger. So... And it was raining and icky, icky that day when I dropped it off. So I was like, Tanya, can you just bring this home? But she can't bring it home um, this time because um, I actually have to use a coupon because it's $1,000 a month. And so I've, I have to give them a coupon in order to get it discounted. It's a new diabetes injection. So... Um, and then I got to go to CVS and pick up my metformin. And, and girl, did I tell y'all he put me on Lipitor? Oh, for my LDLs. And I was like, I am not going to take this medication. I don't know why this man trying to get me all medicated up. But I was talking 
to a rep right now and she was like, Lisa, hey, you better listen to Dr. Wynn and stop listening to yourself. I said, I don't do all that medication, girl. She was like, Lisa, you better listen. The leading cause of blindness, diabetes. And she just went down all the different organs. And by the time she finished, I was basically dead. So I was like, okay, I'll go get that prescription filled and take it. So anyways, um, back to what I was talking about before. Remember what I always say, people, life is a choice. You know, you can choose to be happy. You can choose to be sad. Um, being bitchy just isn't one of the things that I enjoy doing. It makes me mad when I get mad, you know? So, um, yeah, I just choose happiness. And um, today, most of the people I take care of is, is in my age bracket, you know? We're, we're about 45 to 65. That's about my greatest demographic, I can say right there. Uh, I've got people way older than that, and I've got people way younger than that. You know, I treat everybody. But Texans are funny people. Um, and it's maybe because I'm from California. So a heavy accent and cowboy jargon sometimes to me doesn't seem like a person is angry. Let me give you an example. When they come in and say, oh wee, I'm so fiery mad, I could spit tobacco. What the hell did you just say? So to me, it's laughable. So when my client was going off, at first I said to her, oh, that's funny. You're so funny. And then she kept going on and on and on. You know, she didn't even want to get on the table and do her Botox. She was like, I got to calm down. I got to calm myself down. And then her whole neck, I'm not even lying, turned purple, burgundy, whatever the hell color that was. And I was like, um, lady. Is that why they call y'all rednecks? And she started laughing. Of course, I was trying to be funny and everything, but I had never, ever seen a person's neck turn that red when they worked themselves up. And so um, her boyfriend chimed in. No, they called them rednecks because they was out in the sun and, you know, their necks was exposed and the neck will turn red. I was like, oh, okay, well, I really don't know why they call them rednecks. Especially if that's my thinking. If I was thinking that's why they called them rednecks, you know, I don't know. I'm not trying to be funny now. I'm just saying I didn't know why they called them that. In fact, if I really think about it, I thought it was a derogatory remark based on like you being countrified or whatever, you know, not being civilized. But when I saw that neck turn red, I was like, oh, she's, she had just worked herself up. So don't let your work <laughs> kill you. Because she was like, they're going to kill me. They are literally going to kill me. And I said, no, they're not. You the fool. You killing yourself. Well, Lisa, you don't understand. You don't have a stressful business. You don't work with a bunch of people that stress you out. And I said, don't fool yourself, baby girl. Don't, don't do that. Because you can always say, you know, someone else's job, life, marriage, everything is easier. But when you walk up in those shoes, then you'll know, wait a minute now, this is just as difficult as my stuff is. How would you like to do procedures You and people have reactions to them? Huh? How about some of that? Um, some of the stuff I do is so like some of the chemicals you never know when somebody's gonna have a reaction i had a lady one of my products had um what is that stuff it wasn't sulfur it was um eucalyptus eucalyptus 
practice, baby. Yes. And when I say that this lady's skin was red, raw, like somebody had taken a brittle pad and scrubbed her skin away for like, I don't know, 15 minutes straight. She sent me the re, uh, her um, picture and she was just red at first. Real like red, red. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it might be the lighting, you know, that's what I was thinking. Maybe it's the lighting, maybe she's not really that red, you know. The next day she sent me a picture and it looked like abrasions, like somebody had dragged her body. And I said, what did you do? And she said, Lisa, I didn't do anything. I said, well, how did your skin get like that? And she said, Lisa, it just got redder and redder. And when I woke up, this is the way my skin looked. And I said, well, wait a minute now. Let me read these ingredients and you tell me if you're allergic to any of this stuff. And I read the ingredients. Well, honey, it could be a first time for a reaction. And that's what it was. Hmm. Yeah. I was reading the screen. And that's what it was, a first time reaction. You know how often people can have a reaction in my business? You know, you know how people are. They are quick to blame you for something. So, yeah, I have stress even with my patients. You know, they're like, oh, Lisa, my lips are not full enough. And, I'm, and I will tell them, you can have fuller lips. No, no, Lisa, no, no. And then I get a text, Lisa, my lips just don't look full enough. Didn't I tell you that before you left? I had that happen last week. It was two weeks ago. I filled her lips. I said, let me do them the way I want to do them. She said, no, Lisa, no, no. Just put a little bit in. I said, you ain't going to be happy. Lisa, please. I'll come back if I want more. I was like, okay, you hate getting your lips done. I hate doing your lips because you don't like pain like that, you know? So then um, last week she go and she was like, Lisa was right. I need more lips. And she cut up so today when she came and got some her husband had to leave out of the room he was like oh Jesus anyways all that to say um everybody has stress it might not be all the time you know but don't let the situation wear you down honey don't let life you know, wear you down, where you are fooling yourself again to think that it's supposed to be fair. It ain't gonna be. Stop wanting it to be. It's not. Expect it not to be fair. So, in my marriage, let me tell you this. My daughter called me up yesterday morning she was so frustrated we were talking and she's one of those people that is my daughter's very dramatic and she's like mom Ralph thinks that he should just come home and do nothing while I do all the work he does yeah mom quit it stop it mom I was like well what Kimberly he's not being fair she's like mom stop it I was like no you stop where is Ralph right now he's at work where are you right now mom where are you I'm at home okay so you mean to tell me when I was there Ralph came home at seven o'clock at night okay well most time he gets off early mom he's home by 4 35 okay but he didn't went to work all day, has he not? And you didn't have to go to work. Well, I have to do the cooking, the cleaning, the... Dead. Okay, so the house is your work. The house cleaning, 
the cooking, the rearing and the tending to the cheering. Well, when do I get a day off, mom? I said, when do you schedule it? That's what I want to know. When do you schedule it? For you housewives, when do you schedule it? No, it should be fair. It is fair. You both have a job. So what, he gets to come home and not be a dad? To be honest with you, hell yeah. Because let me tell you why. His being a dad is his choice. You being a mama ain't. Because you didn't have to have those kids. If you didn't have them, they wouldn't be there. That's the way I look at it. If you didn't have them, they wouldn't be there. So you chose to have those kids. So honey, I take full responsibility for the four I bought in this world. Full responsibility. I ain't never looked for a man to be a dad for my kids. If he wants to be a dad, that's on him. But I never, ooh, I think you should read the kids' bedtime stories. They know what the hell they're supposed to do. They don't, Willie don't need me to tell him what to do or how to be a dad. He knows what he should do and what he wants to do. He will never, ever tell anybody, well, Lisa suggested that I read bedtime stories to the kids. He won't ever, ever, ever tell anybody that I made him give our kids a bath one time. Not one time. Now, I said, Kimberly, if you had a job and you both worked nine to five and you were coming home, then hell to the yeah. He should be pulling half the weight. Put those kids in the bathtub. Read those kids their bedtime story. Help me make these plates. Clean that ring out of that bathtub. You know, do some stuff. You ain't just going to sit around here while I done went to work, you know, if that's how you feel then I understand. But what's your job, mama? What's your job, housewife? What's your job? Those things are your job. Do your job and shut the hell up. Whatever. So, I, I, like I said, I'm not trying to win an argument. I, I really don't care how she wants to run her house. If she would, she left the conversation with it ain't fair. Ralph ain't fair. Ralph needs to do more. This, that, and the other, yada, yada, yada. And Ralph, when I was there, Ralph was like, she actually think that I should go to work all day, Lisa. You know, get up at four in the morning, do PT, go to work, and you know, then come home and wash dishes. I said, no, I don't agree, and I'm not saying that. To go against my daughter. I'm saying that because that is 100% truly how I feel. I would not have my husband. My husband would used to go to work. Honey, he came home. My house was clean. My laundry was done. He ain't never had to fold no clothes. Why? Because that was my job. For those eight hours, that was my job. My cheering, my house. And if it was in my house... The cooking, in the house, I had to do it. The cleaning, in the house, I had to do it. The cheering, the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, that was my job. I wasn't looking for it to be fair. Because in my mind, it was fair. He did his eight hours, I do my work. He's 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 got the hard part. He got to commute. He got to deal with other people that he ain't give birth to. <laughs> You know, no, I just had my loving babies around me and I just had to tend to them, which was my privilege, my honor. So it ain't going to be fair. And if I'm coming at you and you don't like what I'm saying, honey, change the channel, baby, change the channel. Cause there is somebody that will say something that will tickle your ears and you will agree with, but it's time for some of these women to grow up. Like my husband say, Ooh, you and your sister, there ain't, ain't going to be women like you guys out there. Because everybody's looking for life to be fair. They're not looking for that old-fashioned relationship. At least that's what folks say. Oh, y'all got old-fashioned relationships. No. No, baby. We ain't got an old-fashioned relationship. I don't have an old-fashioned way of thinking. I, in my mind, I have the right way of thinking. You know? I'm trying to be happy in my life and I'm not looking for it to be fair.
I don't need Willie to do the laundry and fold the clothes and put them away. I do it my dang on self. I don't need Willie to go to the grocery store and get the groceries and, and you know, come home and put them away. I do it my dang on self. I'm not looking for Willie to cook because, honey, I don't like the way he cook anyhow. Okay? So, I can do those things. Don't bother me at all. You know, but when I don't want to do them, I don't do them because I'm not serving them doing them, am I? You know, but I'm not looking for life to be fair, folks. I just came in my um, development and you see how dark it got all of a sudden, honey. That sun just said goodbye. Don't look for it to be fair. Lower your expectations, then you won't be disappointed. That's what I say. Ooh, my teeth are so light. Look at these light teeth. Jesus. Y'all see these? Look at it. Ooh, cha, cha, cha. I'm using that charcoal um, uh, toothpaste. Make sure teeth are white. Um, so, lower your expectations. Dallas Theater Center. I need to look and see what performances they're having. My husband asked me if I wanted to go to the, um, to, to a basketball game or whatever. I was like, take your son. That'd be good. Husband, I mean, uh, father, son time. Take your son. Hell, I just want to rest. I, I'm not in the mood to go nowhere. Mm -mm. I just ain't. And he was like, okay, don't say I don't take you nowhere. I guess this company sent them tickets and they got a box. And so you can go in the box and get all this food all you want and everything like that. I'm not intrigued. I'm not interested. I just don't want to do it. Now, I will say that when I went to the game, uh, the one time with my client, it was nice and it was fun. We had a great time. But I've already done that in my life. So I figure I'm good. <laughs> I am good. So I have, it is 6.10 at night. It took me that long. Mind y'all, I'm 17 minutes away from my work. It took that long to get home today. Because mm, mm, mm. of that that street being backed up like that but it's all good we made it home so i'm gonna go in here and um i oh look at all those boxes diamond art box i see is on my porch jesus got to go um what was i gonna say to you guys i can't even remember deuces i'm out i saw my box i'm excited bye-bye